Glory to God. Grab your Bibles, everybody. Lift your Bible and say this out loud with me. This is my Bible. I have what it says I can have. I do what it says I can do. I am what it says I am. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am about to receive the incorruptible, the indestructible, the ever-living, the ever-producing seed of the living God. Father, I confess, my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, my body is awake. From this moment forward, I'll never be the same. I'll never, 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 never be the same. Amen. 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 You'd think after 30 years I'd know that. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got to tell you, though, what was, when I was trying to make that confession, I was preaching my message. So I get to hear it again because I already preached it to me once. Open your Bibles to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Buddy's going to quote this before we get to it, right? John chapter 1, verse 1. And uh, from now on, when I'm sharing, we're going to have all the house lights on so that you guys can read your Bible. So if you want to bring your Bible again, you can do that. But we're going to have the scripture also on the screen when I'm preaching because I may use different translations, and not everybody has the same translation. So from time to time, you can look up there and we'll talk about it. For John 1, John 1, 1, and everybody knows it. If, if Buddy can quote it, you know everybody knows it. Uh, and I just, I'm, I got to tell you this, in a half an hour, Jesus is coming back to take us out of here, and the only people he's taken are the ones that are at church tonight. So the ones that aren't in church tonight, you come Sunday and we won't be here. We'll all be gone. John chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. Now look at verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory. Tells us who the Word is. The Word is Jesus. Amen. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. I want to concentrate on that first part. It says, and the Word was made flesh. Now I want you to turn very quickly to John chapter 6, verse 63. John chapter 6, verse 63, said, is, it's the Spirit that quickeneth or makes alive. Amen. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. So now, what my introduction to this message tonight is, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and the Word became flesh. So in the spiritual realm, there's everything that you and I need. The spirit realm created the flesh realm, the natural realm. God said, and it became. God spoke, and it became. Words are spirit. Words are spirit. So if you need something in your natural realm, if you need finances or you need healing... What you've got to do is you've got to reach into that spiritual realm and get it to come into the flesh realm. And when that which is spirit becomes flesh, you get the manifestation. You make the connection. That which is out there in the spirit creates. And so the words that I speak are creating for me. I'm creating life or I'm creating death by the words that I'm speaking. When you get the revelation or the rhema, of the Word of God. You've got the Logos laying there in your lap. That's the written Word. But when that written Word becomes a spoken Word to you, the Rhema, when it becomes alive to you and you speak it, it generates life and it brings it out of the spiritual realm into the natural realm and brings you the manifestation. And so when you realize this, that the Word of God has everything in it that you need, you just need to become revelation to you or the rhema to you in order to get what it is that you desire. Now when you start speaking it uh, out in the spiritual realm, you don't have the manifestation of it. You're believing for the manifestation to come. 
And so you speak that until you make the faith connection and it becomes natural to you, it becomes flesh to you, you get the manifestation of it. So when I start speaking it, for example, I need a healing to my body. And I go to Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 and I see, by his stripes I am healed. Well, I still may have the pain in my body, but by his stripes I am healed. I'm taking that in the spirit, which I cannot see, and I'm bringing it into the pain in my body that's going to drive the pain out. So I keep speaking it no matter what is going on in the natural realm, no matter how the physical is responding to it, the spirit is going to take care of it. So I keep speaking it, by his stripes I'm healed. I keep applying it and applying it and applying it. By his stripes I'm healed, by his stripes I'm healed, by his stripes I'm healed. One day you wake up and the pain is gone, you've got the manifestation. The spirit became flesh. The word of God is what we need to see, what we need to hear, what we need to get the revelation of. We talked about this for the last two services, Wednesday and then this morning, how important the word of God is. We've changed some things in the building. We've changed some lights. We've changed some background. But really, we need to be coming. If we tore all of this out of here, took all the praise and worship and changed it all, changed all these seats, we still need to be coming for the Word of God. <coughs> no matter what the conditions are, if we're in a tent, if we're in the parking lot, no matter what it is, we need to be pressing in to hear the Word because the Word changes me. These lights don't change me. As a matter of fact, these lights might cause some of you to criticize it. The clothes that I'm wearing, might, they're not going to change anything. Some of you might not like blue, so you're going to be sitting there saying, I wish Pastor would never wear blue. Well, you see, that's not going to bring life to you. You need to be coming, and if you're coming to press into the Word of God, it won't matter who you sit next to. It won't matter what's going on in church. You're there for the Word of God. You won't get offended if somebody parks in your spot or sits in your seat or if they're doing something that you don't approve of. You could care less because you're pressing in to hear the Word of God. The Word of God is going to change you. As a matter of fact, if you get the Word of God in you, you won't be able to criticize anybody else. The Bible says in Ephesians, he says, don't be drunk on wine wherein is excess but be being filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. Now, there are a lot of people today justifying, well, we can drink wine. The Bible says drink a little wine for your stomach. Do you realize this, that, that in those third world countries, they didn't have good water? That's why they said that. That's why Paul was talking about that, because they didn't have good water. They had to drink for, uh, from the fruit of the vine. When I was in Guatemala, they told me, don't drink the water we have here. Don't, and, and you know what? I didn't listen 100%. I brushed my teeth with the water. When I got back home, it took me about a week to get the manifestation of, don't drink the water. Don't brush your teeth with the water. They, they know what they're talking about. So you don't drink the water. You, and as a matter of fact, when you're taking a shower, don't let it drip in your mouth. Keep your mouth shut. Don't sing in the shower. Amen. I don't know how we got off on all that anyway, but people, are you can justify anything that you want to do. You can justify anything. You can take Scripture and back up whatever it is you want to do. Amen. You can. Amen. I could have the ushers or the door greeters pass out hanging ropes when you all come to church Sunday, and before the end of the service, you could all hang yourself. Why? Well, the Bible says Judas went out and hung himself. Go ye and do likewise. Amen. I backed it up with Scripture. There are churches that pass around the rattlesnakes. They pass around the arsenic, and if you drink it and you die, you weren't in faith. If you get bit by the snake and die, you weren't in faith. And in order to prove your faith, you've got to handle this rattlesnake. That's crazy. Mark chapter 16 does say, if you drink any poisonous thing, it will not harm you. Well, yeah, but I'm not going to drink arsenic. But if by accident I drink something that's got poison in it, are you all listening? So let, let's, let's rightly divide the Word of God. But let's stick with the Word of God. Amen? Let's not try to justify what we do. Let's get with the Word of God and do what it says. How to get off on all that? Don't say amen now because I'm preaching good. When you get the Word, 
which is spirit, into the natural realm, then you have the manifestation. Now listen to what it said. Jesus, in case you didn't get this revelation, Jesus and the Word are one. Jesus and the Word are the same. How many of you, are we in agreement with that so far? You didn't like that about the wine, but are we okay with the Word? (laughs) So we'll get off the wine, we'll let you drink your wine, we'll be all right. But Jesus and the Word are one. Say amen to that. Amen. Now listen to me. I want you to know that, oh, I, I, I started off on this. Be not drunk on wine, we're in a success, but be being filled with the Spirit. He wants you to get drunk in the Spirit. And if you get drunk in the Spirit, we change the lights, we change the sound, we, we change things, we change acoustics, it won't bother you. It'll take you some tweaking to get used to it. There isn't anybody in this church that probably as hard to change things as I am. I don't like change. Back in the 60s, Pastor Dorothy had to go sneak off and buy me bell bottoms because I wanted straight legs. That's, I justified it. Bless God, I'm on the roof working. I don't want to get tangled up in those bell bottoms. Well, pretty soon I didn't have any straight leg pants in my closet. They were all bell bottoms. I had to start wearing the bell bottoms. Well, you all can you, see the, these boots I've got on? I've had that same style boot since 1972. I can't even buy them in the store anymore. I looked in Detroit. I have to order them through a catalog. I'm not changing. I, I, don't, I don't like change. This morning I told Pastor Dorothy, I said, I'm out of toothpaste. Do you have another tube of toothpaste? She went in the closet and got this new tube out. She said, this is supposed to be better something or other for you. If you don't like this, you can have this other one of mine. And I said, just give me yours. I don't want to change. I like this. Why should I change? That's why I've still got the same wife. I like the one I got. But the Bible says if you're a drunk on wine, even pastor can get used to the change. I can get used to it. We don't say, you know, we haven't sung my favorite song of all time uh, in, in probably 15 years. I'm not even going to say what it is because I'm not going to force Pastor Dorothy to sing it, but I don't sing my favorite songs in church. I like it. You should have seen it. When we first started the church, we used to have hymnals and little songbooks. Oh, my goodness, when we took those out, you would have thought people died and went to hell. We had transparencies. Where's Nancy? You moved on. Nancy used to stand up here with the transparencies and the projector and change the transparencies out when we sang because we took the songbooks out. Am I right? She had a whole box and had them in alphabetical order and Pastor Dorothy would give her the list and she'd stack them up and she'd change transparency. We still got the transparency machine up there in the attic. Oh dear Lord, when we changed the overhead projection. But if you get drunk on the Holy Ghost, those things won't bother you. You'll get used to it. And you'll get used to people. It won't bother you. How many of you are sitting next to a people? Amen. If you're sitting next to a people, if you sit next to them more than four times, there's going to be something about them that bugs you. <laughs> unless you pray in tongues, unless you get drunk on the Spirit, there's going to be something. But drunk people, did you know? Now, I know none of you have ever been drunk, so let me tell you what it's like. When you get drunk, you'll hug anybody. You'll kiss anybody. You don't go, I love you so much. Oh, yeah, you just hug them, and you'll you'll dance with anybody. But then you get over there too far over there, depending on your person. You'll fight with anybody, too. Would you say? And I told the Lord, I said, why do you want us to get drunk? You don't want us to fight in church. No, I want you to fight the devil. So you love on people and fight against the devil. Get it straight. But we need to press in. Let me go back on my outline here. We need to press into the Word of God. You need to be here tonight for the Word of God. Praise and worship is to open your heart to get you ready for the Word of God. That's why tonight, you know, if you would all do that, just come to church, close your eyes, Don't look around you. 
Oh, lift up your hands and praise and worship God. Pray in tongues, sing in tongues. Get ready for the Word of God. It'll change your life. Because the Holy Spirit will come and build His habitation around your praises. But the people pressed in to the Word of God. Turn over to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. And I don't have these written down, so I've got to turn with you so we can all get there together. When Pastor Dorothy preaches, you better have the Word of God fast. You better get there fast. She says, turn to Luke chapter 5, and it came to pass. You don't even get to open your Bible. I mean, she's quick draw, I'll tell you. Quickest, quickest word in the, in the West, right? It came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to what? Hear the Word of God. These were not the perfect conditions, guys. Are you listening? They were standing on the beach. They were out next to the beach on a beach full of sand. They didn't have air conditioning like we have in four-inch padded chairs. They were standing there or laying in the sand or whatever they needed to do. Amen? And they, the disciples were out there hanging their nets up and doing all kinds of things. It, it, Jesus, they had to have some kind of tiki torches or something out there because it was nighttime because the fishermen, it, it was early dawn. They just got in from fishing all night long. So the mosquitoes might have been out there biting them and everything, and you know. And, and this morning, I, I, you know, I wasn't the only one. Some of you were fussing about the heat in here. It got hot in here. I was sweating, and you guys were all blowing, you know, with fans. I didn't have a fan. I had to have Troy turn that one on because it got hot in here. Amen. But you know what? We still went on. But they were pressing in to hear the Word of God. Amen. Because the Word of God changes you. Amen. It is the Word of God. If you want change in your life, uh, it's the Word of God that's going to help you. The revelation of the Word of God. If you're sitting here tonight and you have any need at all in your life, there isn't anything that's going to pull you out of it except the Word of God. Amen. Nothing will last forever. You might get a temporary fix, but if you don't have the Word of God active in your life, you'll be slipping back. And as a matter of fact, you'll get the revelation. You can get healed, you can get blessed, you can get financially stable, you can get going in the right direction, and if you let the Word of God slip from you, you'll fall right back. You've got, that's why we need service at Sunday morning, Sunday night, and, and Wednesday. We need prayer on Tuesday. We need as much as we can get. Amen. Why? Because we'll slip back. Right. Amen. But they pressed in to hear the Word of God. Look, turn to Luke chapter 10. I told you this was going to be a short one. I'm not even through my introduction yet. Luke chapter 10, verse 39 Luke 10, 39. We're talking about Jesus. We preached this this morning, these same two scriptures. This morning, Jesus came in with his evangelistic team. Martha started preparing a meal for him, ministering to him in the natural. But look at verse 39. Martha had a sister named Mary, which sat at Jesus' feet and heard what? His word. Now Martha got upset about it. She wasn't filled with the Spirit at that particular moment, she was criticizing her sister, got mad at Jesus, stopped him in the middle of his sermon, and said, tell Mary to come and help me in the kitchen. But the Lord says, Mary has chosen the better thing to sit here and hear the word of God. The kitchen and all that food will take care of itself if you hear the word first. Amen. Amen. And so they pressed in to hear the word of God. Now, the next scriptures that I'm going to take you to Remember, Jesus and the Word are one. Jesus is the Word. So the next few scriptures that I take you to, where it's talking about Jesus, we're not going to use His name. For teaching purposes, we're going to use the Word. 
Now, we're not doing misjustice because Jesus and the Word are one. You all understand that. Amen. So instead of using the name of Jesus, we're going to use the Word. Or where it's inferring to Jesus as He, or we're going to use the Word. All right? So now watch this. Matthew chapter 14, verse 23. And we've got it on the board there, but I'm going to turn anyway in my Bible. John, uh, Matthew chapter 14. Jeremy does a good job with this, doesn't he? I mean, he's on top of it. Amen. I think he could, I think you're getting so fast, brother, I think if Pastor Dorothy would give you the scripture, you could outdraw her. <laughs> Matthew chapter 14, look at verse 23. And when the word had sent the multitude away... The word went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, the word was there alone. Many of you have the word sitting at home all alone, sitting on the table. You all didn't like that much, did you? But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, the word went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw the word walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it's a spirit. Well, they got that right. They were, wrong. they were afraid of the wrong spirit, though. And they cried out for fear, because they thought it was the wrong spirit. But straightway the word spoke to them and said, be of good cheer, it is I, don't be afraid. You see, there are a lot of people today that are afraid of the Word of God. They're afraid to get in and agree with the Word of God, to do the Word of God. They're full of fear because they don't trust it. They don't trust Jesus that He knows what He's talking about. Therefore, they're afraid to go to church. They're afraid to commit their time. They're afraid to give their tithes. They're afraid to donate and give offering because they don't believe that the Word of God will save them and minister to them and work for them. Come on. I got one amen. They're afraid. No, don't be afraid of the Word. Jesus is the Word, and the Word is one. Amen. And when Jesus tells you to do something, or the Word tells you to do something, don't be reluctant, don't be afraid of it. It will change your life. Amen. He will change your life. Turn to Mark chapter 5. Are we getting this? Mark chapter 5. You see, there are a lot of people sitting with the Word of God that are, uh, they read it, they look upon it, they carry it with them, they're rubbing up against it, but they're not getting anything because they don't get into it with purpose. They don't get into it with, show me the answer, show me life, show me how to get this. In Mark chapter 5, verse 25, there was a certain woman that had an issue of blood 12 years. She had suffered many things of many physicians. She spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew, grew worse. But when she heard the word, when she heard of the word, when she heard of the word, when she heard of the word, she came in the press behind and touched it. But she touched it differently. I'm going to get this word, bless God, and I, it's not just the written word to me, this is revelation to me. What this word says, I'm going to do it. When I get the revelation, I'm going to act upon it, no matter what anybody else is doing. When it says to assemble myself together, there's a reason for that, and I'm going to church as often as I can. When it tells me to get together and pray, I'm going to do that. Do I understand it? Is it exciting? Well, it could be. And I'm going to tell you, Pastor Dorothy and I are front row people. I'm front row people. Now, oh, you don't realize, and I'm not against back row people. I love y'all. Maybe you got a different mindset than I do. But when I was in high school, they had our uh, cla one classroom, our bookkeeping and accounting classroom, set up in desks that were in rows. They were like, 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 a co like a university kind of thing. They were like rows of tables. Well, I sat in the back row. This was, you know, before, before I met Pastor Dorothy. I knew these two girls were going to be in this class, and I liked these girls. So I sat in the back with these two girls. 
I didn't pay attention to the instructor. I was messing with the girls. We were writing notes back and forth, and yeah, I was flunking the class. I didn't even know what bookkeeping and accounting was about. I could have cared less. I didn't care about it. I wanted to be with those girls. Well, then I met Pastor Dorothy, and we got married, and things changed. I'm still in high school, so I went to the counselor's office, and I asked them if I could graduate in January. Nobody had ever done that in the history of our school system. And they looked at my credits, and they said, yeah, you've got enough total credits, but you don't have enough credits in your uh, last uh, high school year. The last year, you have to have so many credits in the last year. You're a half credit short. Now, in order to graduate, if the Board of Education approves it, you have to write them a letter, ask them for the approval, and if they approve it, you need to get another half a credit. And you're flunking bookkeeping and accounting. And you're already past the first card marking. There's no way you can catch this up. If you miss the first card marking in bookkeeping and accounting, you don't know the debits and the credits and where you put all of this. There's no way you can catch it up. But if you could, and if you did, and you got a passing grade in that class, you could graduate in January subject to the approval of the Board of Education. I said, all right, I'll write them a letter, and I said, I'll, do, I'll pass that class. I said, I will pass it. So I went to the instructor. Now remember, I was sitting in the back of the, back of the room playing with the girls back there. Well, number one, I had to get out of that so Pastor Dorothy wouldn't find out about it. <laughs> and so I went to the instructor, and I asked him, I said, would it be possible for you to take one of these single desks and sit me down in the front of the class right up next to your desk. Put this desk right touching your desk and let me sit there eyeball to eyeball with you. Would you do that? And he said, all right, I'll do that. So he got a special desk, put it right there in front of him. I moved up to that front and sat in that front row right in front of his desk. And man, I was grabbing every word. I needed this class. I needed to pass this class. Now I had a flunking grade a D minus, they used numbers back then, I don't know what they do now, or letters. It was a numbers class, but they used letters. Amen. And I was flunking that class. But I took home the book, I started in the beginning, started teaching myself, caught up with the class, and ended up graduating that class with an A plus, And graduated in January. So I became a front row person. If I need to pay attention, I'm going to get in the front row. We, Pastor Dorothy and I would go early to church so we could get to the front row. Why? Because I, I pay attention then. I'm not seeing what's going on. If I'm in the back, I see everything that's going on in front of me. So when we were at Ramah, we were going to a church. We're learning to lift our hands, praise God, worship the Lord, clap your hands, enjoy the presence of God. So we went to this church and, and we got in the front row. And that became a place where we sat, kind of like what Renee does, Renee and Scott. And we sat in the front row. Now listen, the Bible says, lift up holy hands that hang down, clap your hands unto the Lord, praise God, lift your hand, do a wave offering. We're in the front row now, and boy, we're lifting our hands up, and we're having a good time, and we're worshiping God. We thought everybody behind us was doing the same thing. One day, for some reason, we came in and we said, let's sit in the back today. And we sat in the back row. Everybody in front of us. Not one person in that church was lifting their hands and praising God. I was shocked. I mean, the Spirit of God moved on us mightily often. Because we're worshiping and praising God. And I was surprised that nobody was doing that. I thought, we're moving back to the front row. I don't care what the rest of them do. So, what am I saying to you? I don't know. <laughs> All of you are going to be sitting on one another's lap in the front row, right? I'm saying if there's something that's distracting me in church, I'm moving. Right. Amen. There were some people that came to me and they said, well, there's something that distracts me in church. I said, then move. Right. Move to the other side of the church. Don't quit church. Just move to the other side. Amen. There are some people in the church, that they don't like, I, can, I have a hard time standing in the front row because the music is really loud. You know, but I would do it anyway. Now, if you don't do it, I understand. I think Randy wears earplugs, Ralph wears earplugs, 
Ralph just moves to the back. Sometimes Randy stands to the back. But I'm not leaving the church because the music's too loud. Amen. Amen. Pastor Dorothy likes it that way. She gets pumped up. And I get pumped up too if I stand there and listen. But I'm pressing in to hear the word of God. I'm pressing in. So you need to press in. This woman pressed in. Among all the obstacles, everything that was keeping the rest of these people away, the Bible says there was a multitude that were thronging him. Nobody was getting anything. But she did. Why? She pressed through. Watch this. It said, when she heard the word, she came in the press behind and touched the word. Amen? For she said, if I may touch but the word of God, I'll be made whole. Woo! Woo! If I can touch the word, I'm getting what I want. Ain't nobody going to keep me away from it. Amen. Amen. I'm going to church. I'm going to get this. And straightway, or immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body. Did I drop something? Yes, my glasses bounced out, didn't they? Woo! I don't know why I carry these. I don't use them. Anyway. Pastor Dorothy said, you, you don't take care of those. You scratched them all up. There's $600 worth of glasses there, and you can't even see through them because you're so scratched up. Well, I don't use them anyway. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And the Word immediately knew in itself that virtue had gone out of it. Amen. Turned about in the press and said, Who touched the Word? Glory to God. Somebody got it. Somebody touched the word, reached out and touched the word. And the disciples said unto him, You see the multitude sitting there in church, and you say, Who touched you? <laughs> Y'all didn't like that much, did you? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before the word and told the word all the truth. And the Word said to her, it's your faith that did it. Your faith in the Word did it. Amen. There are people that sit and listen all the time and don't get anything because they don't have faith in the Word of God. They don't have faith that it'll change things. But I've got faith in the Word of God. This is the final authority. And I'm going where the Word is preached and where the Word is going for. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to Proverbs chapter 4. Yours, I know it. Did I skip a scripture? Jeremy, did I skip one? You all don't know. You don't have the outline. Did we do Luke 10? Did we? I'm missing one. Mark 5. Oh, I forgot to write one down here. Did we do Matthew 14? Yeah? We did Mark 5. Proverbs chapter 4. I forgot to write the last one down where I was leading you to all up to everything. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. Jesus and the Word are one. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. My son, attend to my what? Word. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Amen. Keep the heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Now watch this. Watch this. Put away from you a disobedient mouth and perverse lips put far from you. Don't let anything come between you and the word of God. Amen. Turn to Matthew chapter 8. No matter what's going on in your life, you need to put away from you a disobedient mouth, a mouth that wants to say anything contrary to what the Word of God says. Uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. Then said, Tyrion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should come under my roof but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Amen. No matter what's going on, the word of God is spirit. And if you speak the word only, and not what's in the natural, 
what's in the spiritual will become in the natural and change the natural. But you've got to learn to put away a disobedient mouth that wants to talk about all the problems, all the issues, all of the things going on, the economy and all of this garbage. And speak the word only. Pastor, yeah, but what about the world? And I don't know. I do know this, that God will take care of it if I speak the word only. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right, Lord, show me where that scripture is. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Um, 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 um. Help me find it. You guys help me find it. Uh, Jesus uh, told them to go to the other side, and he got in the boat with them, and he was asleep on the pillow. Where's that at? Uh, Matthew? No. Luke? No. Mark? Somebody find it. Use your concordance. Use your phone. Help me. Where is it? Mark 4, 38. Oh, I got it, you guys. Turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter 4. <laughs> Verse 38. Let's start at verse 35. Mark 4, 35. I said everything that I said tonight to get you to this place. And I didn't even write it down. Mark 4, 35. The same day when the evening was come, the word said to them, let's pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took the word even as the word was in the ship. And there were also with them other little ships. Well, hi, buddy. How are you doing? You want to come up here with Papa? All right, okay, let's preach the word here. Here, read this to them. Tell them what that says right there. <laughs> verse 37, you see verse 37 there? It says, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Guys, when a ship is full of water, you're in trouble. It's going down. Amen. But they had the word with them, the word was in the ship with them. Amen. The answer was with them. I said, you got the answer with you. Watch this. But the word was in the back part of the ship asleep. The word is sitting on your nightstand asleep. You unhooked my microphone, pal. Now you got to behave. So you got the word sitting in your truck, sitting in your car, sitting on your nightstand, you've got the answer, but it's laying at home, on your bed, on your nightstand, sleeping, and you've got the answer the whole time. The problem is we've got people that want answers, but the Word is asleep in them. Well, yeah, but pastor, I've been in church for 14 years, and I've heard you preach that before. Yeah, but it's asleep in you. Or it's not producing in you. Amen. So what did they do? It says... Uh, verse 38, he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they spoke to the word and said to the word, don't you care? Don't you care that we're perishing? And the word rose up and rebuked the wind. And the word said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And the word said to them, Why are you all afraid? How is it that you don't have faith in what the word of God will do in your life? So you need to wake up the word of God. And sometimes during the week, I know you go to work, you go to a place of business, and it ends up getting covered up with all the pillows and the blankets. You all get what I'm preaching? You need to get to church on Wednesday night and wake it up. You need to get to church on Sunday morning and wake it up. You need to get there Sunday night and wake it up. Why? Because you're going to need it tomorrow morning. You're going to need the Word alive in you. Amen? So wake up the Word. Amen? 
Glory to God, the Word is the Word, and the Word is the Word. And I don't know what else to say. Stand on your feet. Did we get them? Did we get it over to them, buddy? Huh? Why don't you go see Daddy or Nana? Go see Nana. Go see Daddy. Go get him. Nope, I'm going up on the platform. No. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And there isn't any of us, any of us, that are exempt from hearing the Word of God if we want to overcome, Amen. if we want to change. Amen. Because the, the healing that I got in, two, in 1983 was in 1983. Amen. And so that was then, and this is now. Amen. And so what I need now is different than what I needed then. And so I need to keep hearing it again and again and again. And that's why, you know, there, uh, we got a report. Um, some of you remember when Shirley was here uh, a few weeks ago, and she worked for Brother Hagen and used to travel around to all the Rhema churches, which there weren't that many back then. But she made this comment to us. We, we talked to her afterward, and she said it was so good to come and hear the Word of God preached. She said, you would be amazed at how many graduates aren't preaching it anymore. Why? Because they're preaching everything else, trying to draw the crowds, and not preaching the truth. Guys, you might draw a crowd, but are you saving lives? Are you changing lives? The Word of God is what's going to change. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here, because you're all here. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody close your eyes. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Say this out loud. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, thank you for the Word tonight. Word. Waking up that Word in me. It's alive in me. And that Spirit Word became flesh to me. And I got it. Thank you. I receive it. I'm blessed, anointed, speaking the Word. I speak the Word only. And I'm whole. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you guys, and we appreciate you. We love you guys. See y'all. Hallelujah.